Hi there, this is David, and welcome to Let's Play Wild Arms for the PlayStation. This is one of my favorite series and favorite games for the original PlayStation, and it was also one of the first RPGs released for the system. However, unfortunately, it was kind of overshadowed by uh, the later release of Final Fantasy VII. Also, the first RPG released for the system was actually Beyond the Beyond, well, in America, and uh, it's pretty terrible. Uh, but that's another story for another time. The first one released in Japan was Popolo Croix, but that wasn't released here. But anyway, let's go ahead and start off a new game, and here we have a choose-your-own scenario system. So we start off with a wandering youth, a treasure hunter, and a girl from the Abbey. Kind of reminds me of uh, Sukoden 3 or Final Fantasy VI, but I'm going to start off with the easiest one, or at least what I believe is the easiest one, which is a treasure hunter. Lock? No, that's a different game. Treasure Hunter G, maybe? The graphics kind of remind me of that game, I've got to say. Oh, the Temple of Memory. Huh. And who are you? Are you like a talking rat or something? Oh, it's a famous site. Oh, great. Thanks. Well, why don't you tell us this? Oh. What are you looking for? What do you want? Oh, I guess if everybody knows about it, then it's already been ransacked, apparently. Hmm, that's just great. Okay. The power? Hmm, a piece of power? No, that's from a different game. It's a pretty good game. One of the few games of that series that I like, and if you know what I'm talking about, or if you've watched any of my videos, you should know what I'm talking about, because I go off on that overrated series all the time. I guess this treasure hunter guy isn't so smart. It looks like his little rat companion is, uh, much more smart. I'll engrave the name. Hmm. Oh, great. Thanks for all your help. Yeah. Okay. Treasure hunter Jack. Yeah, we'll take it. Oh. Okay. Maybe hand pan would work? Uh-oh. Yikes. Yeah. Oh, uh -oh. Oh, well, this isn't good. Oh! Wow! Oh, Jack Van Buren, the fast draw, dream chaser, and treasure hunter. Huh. I guess a dream chaser is like a drifter, apparently, in the uh, later games. Oh, he's a wind mouse, so he's not a rat. Oh, yeah, this reminds me of something out of uh, Dragon Quest IV. Oh, cool! Whoa! Yikes! Ah! Oh man, this guy can't catch a break, can he? Oh, the ultimate power! Whoa! Wow, this place is really booby-trapped. Oh, it's probably not hidden in here since he's seeking it out, and this is the first place that he's going to. Whoa! How did those rocks go through each other? Shouldn't they have, like, crashed into each other? That's odd. Oh, well, it was pretty cool, though. Um, uh, well, I'll agree with you there. Okay, so, unfortunately, all those, um, booby traps that Jack hit before actually did damage him, even though we couldn't do anything about it, so he only has 69 HP instead of his 85. But let's go ahead and look through all of our menu options here. We have no items, that's just lovely. So, over here, we can look at, uh, his various special abilities. He has Psycho Crack, and if you press the triangle button, you can um, get a little description of his abilities, so that's pretty nice. That's his fast draw abilities. This is his equipment, so he doesn't have much, and he doesn't have anything else too equipped, so we'll deal with that later. What do we have here? This is the various strategies, which are kind of like the strategies that you can choose um, in the Dragon Warrior or Dragon Quest games. I don't really like using them all that much in this game. I mean, you only have three party members tops, so it's not that big of a deal. But it's there, just in case you want to, like, grind or something. The heart shows his status right there, and he has bad luck. Uh, we'll talk more about luck later. And let's see what else we got here. Oh, all sorts of different stuff that you can change here, but it's not really all that pertinent. Like, you can change the controller configuration, or, uh, you know, the views, or the sound and stuff. I'm not going to worry about all that stuff. Let's just go ahead and get started. Head on down here, and, uh, oh, it's a note. Sure, I'll read it. Great. Thanks. Okay. Hey, we got a heal berry. Let's check that out. Cover 200 HP. Nice. Okay. 
And also, you can just walk like this, but if you hold the X button, hey, he gets to run! Bam! But, you know, don't run too hard or you'll get knocked back. And I guess they did take everything of value. Ah! Yikes! Yeah, and if you get if you fall down a hole, you start back at the beginning of the dungeon. So just keep that in mind and be very careful as far as where you run. And here we have our first random battle with some balloons. So what if we start off here, you can change his equipment, his tactics. What does this thing do? Oh, the order. You can run. But I'm going to go ahead and fight. And then over here, uh, if you hold up, you can look at his fast draw abilities, a psycho crack, you can guard, you can use items, or you could use his force abilities. And we have the accelerator is his only force ability, but we can't use it right now, it's grayed out. So we'll just go ahead and attack. Now as you attack enemies or get attacked, you get more FP or force points. There we go, force level up. So now we can use the accelerator ability right here, and it uses 25 force points, so one of those red bars. Um, underneath his name and HP, so we'll go ahead and use that, and then attack, and Accelerator is going to ensure that he always acts first. So you could accelerate and then use like an item or something like that uh, to heal uh, himself or another party member and always ensures the first turn. So that's pretty useful. Keep on going up here, gotta be really careful about where I run. Oh no! Don't want to do that. Yeah, that would suck. Uh, sure. Hmm. I don't know. We can't jump in this game, can we? Oh, how's that? The tools button. Okie dokie. Oh, okay. So hit the square button, and yeah, you get to throw off ham pan, just like that the cowboy hat. So let's go ahead and put that real quick on his head. There we go. Raises his defense points. If you hit the start button, you can bring up the tool screen, and you can choose between various tools, but right now all we have is the hand hand tool, so that's fine. Okay, here we have yet another new enemy, the pill bug. I'll go after that guy first. He actually hits rather hard, and he is able to escape from battle, so you want to get rid of those guys first before you go after the uh, balloons. There we go. And Jack can one-shot pretty much everything in his scenario. So that's why I believe that it is the easiest scenario. And there's no boss associated with it either, so... Uh, that's pretty nice. There's just more puzzles and stuff to do in here, which is kind of fun. Oh, great. Anyway, hit the switch to open doors! Uh. One thing that I really love about the Wild Arms series is how it combines traditional RPG gameplay with puzzles, very similar to like Lufia 2, and it also has some Zelda throwbacks too, which I really thoroughly enjoy, because what it does is it takes the best parts of Zelda, and it takes away the worst parts of Zelda, like its targeting issues and 3D gameplay, and really obnoxious, annoying puzzles, and just action gameplay in general. So over through here, you have to run to get past those spikes, then be really careful because um, if you hit that wall, you're kind of screwed. Do that, use hand pan, and then fall down the hole as like a little shortcut to head back. Now, like I was saying, if you go this way and then you stop short, if you hit that wall over there, that spike's gonna get you, so just be really careful. Now, this is a save point, and you save in this game just as you do in any game. So, yeah, I'm gonna show off me saving here just to show you how to save and then you'll probably never see me save the game again in the entire series. So, yeah. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, a skeleton. Yeah, these guys are hard! They will always go first against Jack, and they deal roughly 30 damage. But Jack can one-shot them, even at level 1, but they give a lot of experience and a lot of gold. So if you wanted to grind against those skeletons, you could, but it's not really recommended because um, you have a limited supply of heal berries, and because they always go first and hit you for about 30 damage, it's just not really worth it. Hit all those little switches and go through here, and you want to take it very slow and do not run in here because you will fall down these holes. So just walk, and as long as you just walk normally across those spikes, you'll be fine. Here we get some hide gloves, go ahead and put that. Awesome and then just wait for it. There we go. 
continue and move and groove along our way. Oh, yet another note. Sure, I'll read it. Oh, well, that's because you're by yourself. If you have a trusty Wind Mouse companion, hey, hey, we can do it and get a nice little teleport. So if you weren't able to do that puzzle, how did the person get out of there? Shouldn't there be like a skeleton or something down there? I don't know. What's all this? Reminds me of something out of Crystallis. Whoa! What's that? Oh, and who are you? An ool? Or an ew? Or a... I don't know. I'm probably just going to pronounce it as ool. Maybe it's supposed to be like elf or something, but it was mistranslated. I don't know. Oh, an ancient race who used technology and magic. And as we all know, ancient technology is far, far superior to modern day technology. Of course. Oh, it's a hologram. Wow, a data storage device. How does Hanpan know about this stuff? If we don't have this technology now, how does he even know what it is or what the proper terminology is for it? Oh, like telepathy? <laughs> oh my god, I love Hanpan. He reminds me a lot of Selene from uh, the Trails in the Sky, or uh, Trails of Cold Steel series. Lilithia? Her tomb? Who's Lilithia? Is she dead? Her icy breath. Oh. Her breath of destruction. That doesn't sound good at all. Okay, I will not go seek Lilithia in her tomb. Of course not. You tell me not to do something, I'll never do it. I'll never go there. Oh, yeah. Don't go to Lilithia, but let me tell you where she is. She's in the land of light. Okay, oh god, the death wind, the heartbeat of annihilation. Holy shit. Absolute destructive power. What the hell is she? Wow. Huh. Whoa! Oh, there's another teleporter. Oh, Jack is searching for the absolute power, that's right! So, as usual, as we all know, the Ool tells him not to go after uh, Lolithia, but then, of course, we're gonna go after Lolithia. And apparently it's in Adelheid, a kingdom to the southeast of here. Oh, I guess that means land of light in the ancient tongue, like uh, Hanpan said, so... Okay, might as well head over there. If you go up at this point and you um, look at that little memory device, you'll get knocked back down and you'll have to redo the Temple of Memory again, unless you actually know the password. And uh, at this point, you could know the password if you, this is like, you know, your second time playing through it or if you have a guide or something, but I'm not going to play it that way. I'm going to play this game the way it's meant to be played, and I'm not going to go inside the Temple of Memory and loot its good treasures until much, much later in the game. But with all this said and done, this pretty much ends Jack's scenario. Oh, binding a soul. So at this point you could choose to go ahead and start the other two scenarios, but I'm not done with Jack quite yet. I'm almost done with Jack, but not quite yet. I want to head over to Adelheid and just check it out. There's just a little tiny thing that I want to do uh, while well, I'm over there in Adelheid. Whoa! Yeah, just be careful whenever you're running. Well, there it is. I like how the world map kind of zooms in and zooms out depending on, you know, where you're at. And fortunately, in this game, you do not have to search. I'm not going to be looking around the town or anything like that. For right now, what I want to do is purchase some equipment that Jack cannot use, but some of your other people can use. So I'll go ahead and buy the magical rod, as well as the long sword, and I don't have enough money to buy the other armors, but I will buy the white robe. Awesome. Okay, so that's everything that I want to do over here in Adelheid. So now, if I want to go ahead and change my scenario to somebody else, go over here and talk to this little parrot, and you can save your game here, and you can also change your party members. So we still have the Surf Village scenario, as well as the Curran Abbey scenario to do, and next time on Let's Play Wild Arms, we're going to be checking out what's going on in Surf Village. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.